Well today folks we're going to look at tying a double selvage on the end of our net. So for any of you who are just clicking on this video um, I've been working on a series of uh, you can kind of you flip over to my channel you can look back through my videos that I've uploaded we're working on building a hook net and I'm nearing the mouth of the net tying off my my last couple of rows of meshes and if you've ever looked at webbing and you've seen on the ends of it where it's got two lines of of twine it's called a double selvage um, and if you've ever been curious as to how they do that this is your video so stay tuned um, there's a specific way you gotta load your shuttle to make it work there's a little bit of math involved so let's jump right into it so the first thing we need to know is how much area how much line we need to cover so in our net we have it's a 30 inch net we have 60 meshes and each mesh takes three inches of string now it's an inch and a half mesh we've been using our inch and a half board okay and to do that we go over the top of the board and then under the bottom of the board so it's an inch and a half and an inch and a half so three inches so three times sixty and you divide that comes out to I can't math um, 180 inches and you divide that by so 180 inches is a really big number it comes out to somewhere around 15 feet 15 16 feet um, I happen to know that my arm span is about six foot so what I'll do I'll take you have to just instead of loading your shuttle just taking your tag in tying it on your shuttle and going from there I'll take stretch this out the whole span of my arm so I've got six foot twelve foot roughly you ain't gonna be perfect eighteen foot now I'm gonna go extra because it never hurts we wanna make sure we get enough line so now we've got we've got eighteen feet eighteen twenty feet of line I'm piling it all up right here just so you can see it's all still connected 18 to 20 feet of line okay here is our tag end here is our shuttle here's our pile of line that we've pulled off the spool and here is our this is just where we decided that we were going to start tying we'll take this and we'll just we will stick it on there just a loop you don't need anything fancy if you really want to secure it to make sure it doesn't go anywhere or slip you can take and go around there around there and a third time and that dude ain't going nowhere now we're gonna load our shuttle like we would with just a standard row of string but we're gonna use the two lines and this is where it's gonna try and get really messy Okay, so we got two lines of string. Now we've got all of our extra that we pulled off, and we're just going to spool that up two lines at a time. Both lines. You want to keep tension on this because it's going to try and act sort of squarely. And ordinarily, I would just lay that spool down in the floor. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Bear with me just a second. We want to leave all of that there. That goes to the floor. And there we are. So now we've got our line coming up from our spool, which is on the floor. We've got our line from our extra, which is on the counter. And we're just going to continue. We're going to hold those two together. And we're going to continue just to load our shuttle. Both strings at the time. I'm sorry my hands are in the way but we're just going to kind of pick through to make sure we don't get a big old rat's nest see and I've got bow strings loading them on there so we're loading two at a time we're going to unload two at a time pardon the dog she's found something she doesn't like Alright, so now we're at, we've got the end of our 
extra string we're just going to lay that right there and I'm going to continue with single line and I'm going to fill the shuttle well I'm going to fill it about halfway I've still got a couple of rows of mesh I need to make and I'm just loading the shuttle same way I load all the time you flip one way and load it on there and then come back so that way that way you don't get any twist in your line um, we're just going to continue to load and then when we tie back in we're tying back in with one string so we tie back in like we always did we're just going to tie into our last loop where we finished with our double sheet bend or however it is that you tie back in a single sheet bend double sheet bend it's up to you it's your weapon um, I just want to make sure that I get enough on here to where I can run um, I need to run about three rows of mesh before I get into my double selvage so I'm gonna finish this up and I will I'm just gonna tie back in run my meshes and I'll see you here in just a second thanks to the magic of movie editing so I went ahead and tied around my my last meshes I am to my seven mesh count between my hooks between where uh, between my throat and the mouth of the net this is where I'm going to start tying in my double selvage um, S E L V A G E, I believe, and that just means it's got two rows, two um, two lines down here on the mouth or the ends of the uh, ends of your web. And usually this will be for a top line or for a um, lower line or mud line on flat webbing, flat walls. I want to give you an idea. And also, um, it's been brought to my attention. I have I have made mention that I've tied this net in a corkscrew, meaning that I jumped a mesh. See how you just you just jump a mesh here. This is your mesh that you're tying into. But by jumping a half a mesh when I started the net, this whole net is tied. Just you tie back in where you where your shuttle runs out of string, and you keep going. There's no start, there's no stop to this row of mesh until you get all the way up to the tail of the net. So, I'm going to have to show you what I do to untie the corkscrew and then explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it so that you'll be able to jump a half a mesh and float it out when you start your net. So we're using an inch and a half, inch and a half um, boards, inch and a half mesh gauge, and that means that you know we're in here we're tying around our inch and a half mesh board so to start taking meshes out or to start decreasing to where we have just a one single row of meshes uh, that starts and stops in the same place we're tying on an inch and a half I'll use my finger as kind of a guide and I'll go see I'll, I'll let this one be a little bit shorter than an inch and a half I'll run and I don't know exactly what this is but I'll kind of measure it I'll pinch it off just pinch it off with my fingers I'll throw my double sheet bend in there if I can throw a double sheet bend throw me a double sheet bend in there and now you see how this mesh is really can't tell on camera but it's a little bit smaller alright so I'm gonna go to my next one and I'm feeling I'm feeling the pressure on it and I'm gonna tie this one a little bit shorter pinch it off it's just a little bit shorter now these meshes are gonna gradually decrease in size if you're if you're not confident you're not comfortable trying to tie it off by hand 
to decrease your mesh size like this grab you a um, let's see we're tying inch and a half webbing tie, grab you about a half inch or a, uh, maybe a, a half inch mesh gauge when you start because you're going to be remember when you start adding your loops you're going to be you see now I'm, I'm coming on down with it see I'm coming on down with it when you start adding meshes in the tail you're going to start small and go bigger until you get to your inch and a half size and I'm coming on down with it now you don't want to get down too small too quick because it'll be really obvious what you did and it'll be really easy to spot so we're just coming on down with it so when you start grab you about a half or three quarter inch mesh gauge and uh, throw you three or four of them in there throw you probably four in there just you know if you're going to tie straight three quarter inch mesh gauge um, step up to a one inch tie three or four of those step up to your inch and a quarter and then inch and a half just kind of you see that's I don't know that's that's probably half inch right there and see we've just we've gone from inch and a half to say a half inch and now when you stretch this out these are they're about the same length well not quite but we're going to tie back in here and we're going to tie across it and then really nobody's going to be able to know so we're just going to burn that off with a lighter and I'm going to set if you look I'm still in my single strand so what I'm going to do I'm going to burn this off I'm going to unload this mesh gauge down until I get down to my tag end I'm not very far I probably just could have should have just kept tying but let me get that set back up to tie back in for the double selvage um, you just but for to, to get into your corkscrew you're gonna be adding meshes so what you're gonna do you're gonna do you're just gonna go through it backwards you're gonna tie your loop around and then you're gonna tie back in and you're gonna start with a small mesh a small mesh roughly a third the size so you get inch and a half you could go a half inch to three quarters on this mesh and then you're just gonna go step up to like a one inch a one inch, a one inch for three or four meshes and then go to either inch and a quarter you can step up to inch and a half and this is going to add a gradual increase in mesh size so that as you keep going with your meshes when you get back around to this mesh instead of coming back here and tying off you'll just jump around to here and tie off and now you have jumped that half mesh and you get kind of a squirrely looking little diamond there but when you come back around to it you're just going to tie back it's just going to tie back in and corkscrew the whole thing super easy to do once you do it once or twice you get the hang of it you'll be good to go so I don't know what happened to the video that I just shot um, basically what we did if we look over here golly these dogs are excited we look around here we've got where we just tied out that's what we just had um, you want these to be um, if you're using three quarter or half inch inch and a half I'm sorry inch and a half mesh gauge you want to end up with a three quarter inch mesh gauge because um, that'll give you or if you're tied on okay so if you're hanging it on a half um, you're doing our math like we've shown you in the videos before you're hanging it on a half you want this bar length right here to be half of what you're tying it if you're tying it on inch and a half mesh then you want this to be I'm sorry you want it to be your bar mesh so you want this to be an inch and a half but since each time you tie a loop you're tying twice because you gotta go over it and then under it so that's a three inch line three inches of, of string to get an inch and a half mesh that means that you need to go to a three quarter inch mesh gauge so that you've only got an inch and a half of string so that means when you pull that last one tight you've got an inch and a half or somewhere there close to um, I tied back in to 
the net since this is where I finished and I'm cutting off and I'm tying back in below it pick somewhere else in the net to start um, I went back between uh, a quarter and a half or a third somewhere I just picked it I just picked some mesh back there and started um, pick somewhere other than where you you do your float because if you float out you've got to you got to go across that to blend it out to make it come out smooth um, we've tied back in we have two lines on our shuttle because when we we put it on there we rolled two up we, we loaded two strings at a time so when it unloads it unloads two at a time so what that does when we tie it it's going to tie off two lines at a time in each mesh so you just tie back in with a double sheet bend and start tying around your block your um, mesh gauge you come down below here you tie across you tie across and you just keep going with that just like you would through the whole rest of the net you just it's no different than anywhere else other than when you get back to this mesh and terminate because you floated your corkscrew out you're gonna end up right back here so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't get up there real quick um, so as always here's a plug um, if this video or any of these videos in the series has been helpful to you in any way, please like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Oh, when you're tying a, uh, a double, see how this mesh right here is a little bit loose? Sometimes you have to come in here and pull each individual string to get it to cinch down. And you want it to cinch down. If these videos are in any way helpful or... Um, if you have any suggestions or you would like to you'd like to see me do videos on a particular subject fishing or fishing webbing related um, or not um, fishing related period um, I'm game for pretty much anything uh, I do some Dutch oven cooking I'm gonna try to have some videos here in a bit on that and where am I at yeah we're we're still getting there we're still getting there. Um, you're just going to tie your double. Just tie your doubles like you would a single line. Uh, this tag in was from in there when I tied in earlier. Apologize for this being so boring. I'm trying to hurry. This is some great, great video footage right here. You're watching a guy tie webbing. You must be bored. Um, any suggestions to better the quality of my video other than don't shoot it off a cell phone? Um, any tips or hints? Um, if you tie webbing and I'm doing something wrong, just drop me a comment, leave me a, leave me a suggestion or a message. Um, I'm open to all kinds of stuff. So we're just going to start peeling thread or string off. Um, hang with me just a second. I want to get down here to where we started floating our webbing out. Because I want to show you how to tie across that. So I can explain how you tie back in. And I tied back a little bit further than I intended to. I guess it went closer to halfway back. Um, coming up in this series, I'm going to tie, alright, okay, so here we go. You see how when I pull this mesh down, this right here starts getting loose? That is to be expected because this mesh was tied a little bit smaller. This is where I started decreasing the mesh size. Okay, now this one is going to be a little bit smaller still so we're getting that little bit of lax in it this one's going to be smaller still and you see how those knots are starting to come towards the mesh board we 
we're starting to come down at a slope here. It's because we're pulling that pulling that corkscrew out of it. Now you don't have to start, you don't have to trace your knots all the way back to where you started the corkscrew and jumped your mesh. You ain't got to do all that because by now you've tied 14 feet of webbing and it's all running straight. Here's a tip. When you get down here, this, this mesh is kind of small right here. So we're trying to fit our needle up through here, and now we do not, we literally do not have enough room to stick that through there. Back off of that mesh a little bit, fit your shuttle through there, like that, and then, I'm going to stick this right here, well, no, it's not going to work. No, well, I got it. <clears throat> Come back, what's under your thumb? when you ran through there, pull that back down and you've got your under and your over I didn't do something right even the best of us make mistakes what did I not do right? sometimes it's harder to undo a mistake than it is to well, it's always harder to undo a mistake than it is to do it right. Oh, that's what I did. I didn't throw my knot around first. Alright, so here we go again. Come around here. Throw your loop over your arm. Let that, let this out a little bit here. And then pull that back down. Always make sure before you tighten this up, that your your right here your mesh is tight against your board just like that again throw your line over your wrist we don't have enough room so we let a little bit of slack out and we come up through there we come up back through that mesh tighten down to where our mesh right here is tight against our board pull that sucker down tight Make sure that both sides of our line is tight. And now, okay, this is where we jump our mesh. We jump a half a mesh. You can, to keep from pulling it so awkward, you can let that one tie out a little bit long. This one needs to tie in a little bit closer. Okay. We pulled that one all the way down. Now we just floated that out and we uncorkscrewed our net. We are terminating with one row of double selvage inch and a half mesh. That's how you, and you just use a reverse procedure to tie back across it um, to jump that mesh. Now remember when you jump that mesh you are decreasing one mesh size when you when you go up or back when you, you increase your mesh size you decrease your mesh size. So I'm going to continue tying this all the way around when I get around to where I started um, I'm going to be done. I'm just going to tie back in to the same knot and I'm going to tie back into this same knot right here. I'm going to burn my tag ends off and the next time you'll see this, we're going to be putting a hook in it.